Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their June of 2015 regional auction. While I was looking through the list of rifles that they have here, I noticed that they actually have examples of all three of this interesting World War II trinity of Hungarian rifles. Now, I like the sort of unusual firearms, obviously, hence forgotten weapons, and so Hungarian guns are, are a nationality that appeals to me because not many people are interested in them and they don't get that much attention. So the Hungarians start out, of course, as part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and uh, at that time their standard rifle was the Steyr M95 straight pole, uh, both rifles and carbines. Now after World War I, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was broken up, and uh, Hungary ended up using Steyr M95 rifles and carbines for a long time. Uh, in particular, they ended up standardizing on what they called the 31M, which was a carbine length version of the M95. And those are interesting. They're mechanically identical to all of the other Steyr straight poles out there, just with some difference in markings. However, uh, in 1933, they started experimenting with a new service rifle. Uh, it was the 33M. And they only made a couple hundred of these things. They're experimental. They were a Mannlicher rifle. And they ultimately adopted them in the form of the 35M, which is a rifle I have here in front. Uh, the 35M continued to use the same 8x56 rimmed ammunition from the Steyr straight poles. It used the same clip. It's a five round Mannlicher style end block clip. And you can see this rifle has a, uh, a magazine well protruding down below to hold that. It's kind of cool. You load the whole clip as a single packet, and when you chamber the last round, the empty clip falls out the bottom of the magazine. Uh, and if it gets stuck, it gets pushed out when you load a new clip in in its place. So these are kind of cool rifles. It's very much a Mannlicher rifle, uh, the bolt and the magazine system. And they were quite happy with these guns, but then World War II kicks in. And when the Germans occupy Hungary, they, of course, came to the FEG plant where these were being made. And uh, being Germans, you know, they looked, they said, ah, you know, we see you're making rifles. We too like rifles. And had the Hungarians start manufacturing basically this same gun, but adapted to German specifications. So the Germans wanted these rifles in 8mm Mauser, rimless. So the magazine was changed. Uh, we have an example of the, the, one of the German contract rifles right here. The magazine is now flush. Uh, it's still five rounds, but it's flush. Uh, loads via normal Mauser stripper clips. And then they did a few other things. They changed the bayonet lug to fit a standard German bayonet. Uh, basically made this thing handle equivalent to a Car 98K. Uh, they bent the bolt handle, again, to match the German rifles. And what's kind of funny is they designated this rifle the Gewehr 98-40, or G98-40. That's marked on the receiver. But, you know, mechanically, this really doesn't have anything to do with a Gewehr 98. Uh, it's kind of interesting that they chose that terminology. Clearly, they're just looking for rifles that fit the same basic handling characteristics as the standard um, K98. So the German rifles are all marked with JHV, which was the manufacturer code for FEG in Hungary. And they made those for a couple years. And the Hungarians you know, were making these rifles for the Germans and, and looked at them and kind of realized, hmm, you know, there's a lot going for this with uh, the 8x57 ammo. And you know what? Why don't we just simplify things and we, the Hungarian army, will also adopt the same rifle. So they started manufacturing a Hungarian version called the 43M in 1943, which was effectively the, uh, the exact same rifle as the German 9840, just with some nomenclature marks, and, and they changed the bayonet lug back to use a Hungarian-style bayonet, which they had. Um, and between the three of these, we have this real interesting set of the guns of Hungary during World War II. So I thought it'd be cool to take an opportunity to look at all three of them. Um, why don't we go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look at some of the markings. So if you're looking to pick up some of these, you'll know what to expect and what to look for. We will start here with the 35M. Frankly, I think this is the most interesting of the bunch because it's kind of the most unusual and unorthodox. So it's first of all easily identifiable by this combination of having an exposed magazine well, which is for the single stack five round end block clip. And then these all have two piece stocks. So there's a, a big steel band uh, here just behind the trigger. And then the butt stock is a separate component from the front stock. Now the 35M also uses a straight bolt handle. And when we look at the markings, 
These were manufactured in Budapest. They're going to be marked 35M, and they're going to have a Hungarian acceptance stamp on them here. And the rear sights are graduated from 100 out to 2,000 meters. Frankly, that 100 is, is kind of a nice touch. Uh, a lot of these military rifles will start at two or 300 yards or meters. And it's for today's shooter, where we're much more likely to be shooting at a, a closer range, it's a nice addition to, to have it all the way down to one. So the Hungarians made about 162,000 of the 35M rifles from about 1936 until 1943 when they switched to the 43M. You'll have a serial number here on the barrel. The bolts on the 35M are not numbered, however the butt plate is in really huge deep lettering. So this is actually a matching example, which is kind of nice. A lot of the ones of these you find are mismatched. So the, the Hungarians took the 35M and this is their adaptation of that to German specifications. The receiver is going to be the most distinctive part for markings. There's no longer a, a model designation on top here. What we have instead is JHV, which is the German Ordnance Production Code for the FEG factory in Hungary. And then there's going to be a year of manufacture here. That'll be uh, 41, 42, or 43, typically. So the Germans made, or, or, or 44, I'm sorry. So the Germans made about 138,000 of these, and being Germans, they wanted serial numbers all over the place on it. So you'll find them on the receiver and the barrel. Moving back, the side of the receiver it does have the G9840 markings for the designation. The bolt handle is going to be numbered. The safety is going to be numbered. Pretty much everything on here is numbered. We have a number on the, the metal band, the socket for the buttstock. We do also have numbering on the butt plate, although it's a much, more, a much smaller standard kind of German style rather than the really huge deep numbers used by the Hungarians for their own domestic rifles. The nose cap is numbered. The rear band is numbered, although it's underneath the sling here. You'll see that the bayonet lug on this is a standard German version. So that takes a regular uh, Car 98 bayonet. In comparison, the Hungarian version, the Hungarian bayonets, just have more of this little uh, plug on the, the front band, on the nose cap, that sits in the center of their bayonet handle. And now, moving on to our last variation, this is the Hungarian 43M. Let's take a look at the receiver. Going back to the Hungarian style, like the earlier guns, this is now marked just 43M. It now has, we have our serial number on the barrel, nothing on the receiver. So in a lot of ways, we're going back to the Hungarian standard here. We will have the same sort of serial number on the butt plate, which does match on this rifle. And then they did take a, a, a card from the Germans and they started numbering the bolts. Uh, in this case, the bolt is mismatched, but that frankly doesn't really matter. Um, the bolts on the 43Ms are interchangeable with the, the German 9840s because they use the same cartridge and they're mechanically identical. The one other difference you will notice between the German guns and the Hungarian guns is that the Hungarians have sling swivels on both the side and the bottom. There's a sling swivel back here on the buttstock. So these could be used by either infantry or cavalry troops. The Germans didn't have, they only used a standard German type sling with a hole cut in the buttstock and then a sling swivel on the side of the front band up here. So the Hungarians added the bottom sling swivels as well. All right, since we have this rifle here and there isn't a whole lot of information out there about these, I figure this is a good opportunity to show you how to disassemble the bolt. It's not difficult, but it does take a couple of steps. So we're gonna start by pushing the safety in and unscrewing this cocking knob. This, by the way, is the Hungarian 43M bolt but it and the 9840 are identical, and it and the 35M bolt are mechanically the same. So this disassembly procedure works for all three rifles. So we're gonna unscrew this all the way. Then I can take out the safety and its spring, and then I can take this piece off. This is the actual sear piece. I'll take that off. Now I've got the front of the bolt to deal with. And the trick here is you want to push down on the extractor 
That's the ejector, which runs back and forth. Um, the ejector hits a protrusion in the receiver and kicks forward like that to eject the cartridge. This side, this has our extractor, and what we want to do is push down on this and then rotate the whole thing so that the ejector lines up with the bolt handle here. So I'm going to push that in, rotate. It is under spring pressure, so hold on to it when you do that. Now we have our bolt body here, which we can set aside, and then our firing pin, firing pin spring, and the bolt head comes off nicely. So if you need to replace your extractor, this is how you take apart the bolt to do it. Um, extractors are kind of difficult to get for these rifles, although I believe there are some reproductions made. So that's it. Reassembly is the exact same procedure, just in reverse. Put that on. So as you're doing this, you want to screw the cocking piece all the way on. This is kind of like a Mosin gun in this case, until this uh, screw thread or screw face is even with the back of the cocking piece. Once you do that, the firing pin will not protrude through the front of the bolt face in this position. Once we're in a firing position, there, that's, that's where the rifle would be when fired, and now you can see you have firing pin protrusion. If you leave this unscrewed too much, you do run the possibility of the firing pin detonating a cartridge while you're trying to chamber one uh, out of battery. That would be very bad. And of course, you also run the risk of having too much um, firing pin depth and piercing through a primer, which would also be bad. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, all three of these guns are coming up for auction here at Rock Island. Uh, they're all part of larger lots of bolt actions, so if you're interested in one or all of them, take a look at the links in the description text below. Those will take you to the catalog pages for each one of these three rifles, and you can check out the other guns that come with them, Rock Island's pictures, descriptions, etc., and have everything at your fingertips right there on the website to place a bid online and do your best to add these to your own collection. Thanks for watching.